Rubuchaka, and tourists would often come here to relax after a tiring day, or indeed even stay for the night. So it's actually really cheap. This place is around 10 RMB per room, and this is mine. I need to go in and change, so give me a bit of privacy. After an entire day of sweating on my bike, it was a great feeling to sit back and let the hot spring waters wash everything away. I've had a great soak. I'm dressed up in traditional Tibetan attire, and uh, we're going to go get some grub. It's not often I don my camper clothing, but I've gone and got specially dressed up just for this dinner. Oh, nice. My friends have uh, invited me to a very traditional Tibetan dinner, and the spread looks awesome. Uh, what are these things? Ah, uh, nice. Yeah, butter tea, my favorite. This is a whole yak's tongue. This was a veritable feast by any standard and I was touched by how far my friends had gone to welcome me. This is yak tongue. Let's, uh, let's give it a try. Mm. Mm. It's actually really good. Thank you. Mm. 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 <laughs> In hindsight, we probably should have set a dress code. The dinner was a great send-off, and in the morning, we continued on towards Xiangcheng. A word of warning, Tibetan foods are high in oil, so take care not to eat anything that's gone cold, as it'll give you a serious stomach upset, something I had the honour of experience. Don't worry though, Xiangcheng's altitude is much lower than Daocheng's, and at just two hours drive away, its pleasant surroundings make it a great spot to rest and nurse yourself back to health. So we've arrived in Xiangcheng, which is around uh, 2,800 meters above sea level, and it's markedly different from Daocheng because not only is the sea level different, but the climate and the weather is actually a lot warmer and a lot more comfortable for me. My first impression of Xiangcheng is that it's just so clean, and as soon as you enter town, you'll see its magnificent lamasserie sat on top of a hill. I've come to the Sumpiling Lamasserie here on Bamu Mountain, one of the most important lamasseries in the Sichuan Tibetan area, as I've been told that if I'm lucky, I can catch the lamas debating their Buddhist doctrines in the morning. Let's go see. The Ling in Sumpiling denotes its grandness, and it's one of the three most important Gelug lamasseries in Kam. The others are the lamassery we visited in Litang, which is known as Topten Chokaling in Tibetan, and the Songzangling lamassery in Zhongdian. <laughs> this lamassery is also a place of learning, and lamas will gather in the classrooms to learn scriptures and the sciences. To test their knowledge, lamas often hold scripture debates out in the courtyard. They'll ask each other questions, clapping their hands to emphasize their point. Respondents can choose whether or not to answer, but answer wrongly and they'll get a clap on the head, which is motivation enough if you ask me. Xiangcheng is very different to other towns. Its pure white houses look like a string of pearls on the mountains.
The people here work hard to maintain them. Even the women help out with manual labour. And you'll often find them singing work songs to keep morale high and also keep people moving in tune. As this place has been around since Princess Wencheng's time almost 1400 years ago, the dresses here are incredibly unique. This is because they've been influenced by a combination of traditional Han Chinese, Nasi and Tibetan styles. I've just run into these guys dancing to celebrate their harvest and you can really tell how happy they are. And the dresses, they look really intricate. The clothing looks like something I've never seen before. And if your subject is willing and patient enough, you'll find that the dress will have exactly 108 folds, a number that's considered auspicious in Buddhism. It looked like everyone had a great laugh, and with the festivities over, it was time for the villagers to go back to their towering homes. Uh, okay, this lovely lady here has been ever so kind and invited me to go check out her house. I've honestly never seen such a grand and well-kept Tibetan house before. It literally looked like a castle. I've heard that all the houses here are painted white because Tibetans consider it an auspicious colour and the materials used also help to prevent rainwater from seeping in through the walls. Hey, hey, how are you? Hey, you're good. Hey, just the love, just the love. Hey, you're good. Hey, hey, how are you? Wow. They've got a really intricate house and I love all of these decorations. I've not really seen them anywhere else. Ah. The people of Xiangcheng really appreciate the little things in life. And you can see it in the kind of lives they lead. It's why homes here are so lovingly decorated and looked after, and why every household enjoys growing their own orchard. Where else would you be invited to join in with llamas having lunch with their families? There's a kind of tranquility to be found here, and it's no wonder why Xiangcheng is now being marketed as a refuge for weary travellers to come and refresh their spirits. With the environment in Tibetan regions as difficult as they are, I recommend staying for a while, so you can enjoy a slice of the harmonious life you can find here. If you do tire of taking it easy all day, and want to go out for a night out on the town, Xiangchen's got it covered as well. Traditional dance meets neon floors in the pubs here, so come and party it up with the locals, and experience Xiangchen's very unique nightlife. So we're now on our way to Duorong, which I've been told is a 170 kilometer drive from here. And uh, it's going to be a very long ride. Duorong lies at the border between Sichuan and Yunnan province. And it's the final section of Sichuan's Shangri-La. Although it takes a while to get there, there are many little villages dotted along the way that aren't on the tourist radar at all. If you have the time, I recommend stopping at a few and seeing what stories they might have to tell. You never know what little gems you might find. So we found this nice little village called Needing, around 50 kilometers from Xiangcheng, and it's got these ponds full of wild fish. And since Tibetans don't eat fish, they worship them as a kind of water Buddha. These fish have been allowed to roam freely and I think there are probably at least a couple thousand of them here. By the time we did eventually reach Durong, it was already night time. Most travellers passed by Durong without stopping, but we had been told of a place that we just had to see.
After a very bumpy and rather dangerous one-hour ride from Duorong, we've arrived at Wongjia Lamassery, which is built into this huge cavern in the mountain face. And people come here to worship at this Lamassery, which is considered to be receiving a golden key to the 108 sacred mountains in the Tibetan area. The name of this place loosely translates to Lamassery of a Hundred Oms, and I was told it was one of the first lamasseries in Gansu Prefecture, built around the 8th century. Apparently, it was founded at the behest of legendary Padmasambhava, who essentially made Tibetan Buddhism what it is today. I was also told that I could find Oms, which are sacred syllables found in Tibetan mantras, occurring naturally in the rocks surrounding this lamassery. Try as I might, I didn't actually discover any sacred rocks, but don't let that discourage you from coming here and taking in the incredible atmosphere of this place. <coughs> mm, it's really cold and refreshing and... Uh, I saw the llamas doing this, I'm gonna pat myself on the head for good luck as well. The journey so far has been nothing short of spectacular, but our adventure across Sichuan is finally coming to a close. However, we do still have one more stop, and it takes us right into Yunnan's Shangri-La County. I've cycled across highland pastures and poplar forests and met some incredibly warm-hearted people here, and I've grown to really admire their passion for life that comes from their strong religious belief and also their coexistence with nature. Once we cross over this bridge with the Jinsha River beneath, we'll leave Sichuan and enter the Yunnan region where our journey will be nearing its end. But don't worry because we've still got quite a lot left to see. I'm Taran and we'll see you on the next episode of Travelogue.